Alrighty then, welcome back to your 34th tutorial, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be talking to you guys about spotlights, some of my favorite types of lights in the UDK. So, in order to add spotlights to the screen, we can go ahead and add them, but let's uh, spice things up a little bit by adding some static meshes. So go ahead and open up your content browser, and make sure you have static meshes selected, and go ahead and select lights. Again, you don't have to do this, but I just want to add a little flavor. This one looks pretty cool, but I want something a little bit different. Ooh, look, ooh, one of these. Either one, eeny, meeny, money, mo. Okay, this one. Go ahead and drag one of these lights out on the screen, and first of all, I can tell this thing is massive. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink this a bit. Probably in your side view is going to be your best bet. And go ahead and slide that down, and... I'll just slide that up. I want to make sure that it's kind of in front of my, uh, whatever this thing's called, a totem pole, a pillar, because I wanted to cast a pretty cool shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and add one right there, and then I'm going to go ahead and alt drag and add another one kind of close but kind of far away. These kind of look like people with like their hands hanging down and their legs like kind of hanging, kind of like tiny little glowing robots nailed to the wall. That's what I think of when I see these. Is that wrong? Should I see the psychiatrist? Probably. But anyways, now that we got our level set up, time to start adding some lights. So the first thing we want to do is figure out how to add these spotlights. And that's the easy part. In order to add spotlights, go up here to View, Browser Windows, and what we're going to want to select is Actor Classes. Now we go ahead and click this, and we can already see I have everything because I was messing around with it before. This if you expand lights these are all the different types of lights so you guys are saying alright spotlights and point lights those are two kinds of lights that's it well look how many different types of lights that we have to learn pretty cool huh so in this tutorial I'm gonna be working with spotlights so go ahead and select the regular spotlight not spotlight movable trackable just go ahead and select a regular spotlight and don't double click it or try to drag it or anything just go ahead and select it and X out of your screen now in your perspective view, go ahead and right click and right and you'll have an option that says add spotlight here. So go ahead and click that and now everything goes dark because it added the spotlight but it's not shining on anything yet. So go ahead and make sure you have your move tool and drag that up. And as you can see, a spotlight is basically, well, how, I don't know, it's a spotlight. I don't know how to describe it better than that. You guys should know what a spotlight is. It's basically if you like have a spotlight in your hand and you look at what's in your hand that's a spotlight <laughs> I mean for real I can't explain it better than just looking at it you can see what it does it's different than like a light bulb where it kinda goes in every direction that kinda shines on a certain point so yeah that's kind of a better explanation so with that being said I want to go over one thing there are a couple properties that we have to watch out for or a couple common properties when dealing with spotlights. So go ahead and with your spotlight selected hit F4 and this is going to bring up your properties window but check it out. If you go ahead and expand light and expand light component you're going to have a special section for spotlight component. Now you're going to have two main properties that you need to watch out for. The first one is inner cone angle and the second one is outer cone angle. Now right now you can see that it's kind of you know just one cone out on the screen so you might be kind of confused as what the difference between these two are and a lot of beginners are so I'm going to explain it to you. Inner cone angle is let me make this inner cone and outer cone different change these to like 20 and 50. So now whenever you look on your screen you can see that you get two distinct distinctive cones. You get your inner cone, which is right here, and you get your big outer cone that surrounds it. Now, it may be a little hard to tell what's going on just by looking at this, but it's basically this. Whenever you're setting up your light, your inner cone is like your hot spot. That's the brightest spot of your light. Now, the outer cone is kind of like the point where it starts fading off. So, think of your light more of like a gradient where the inner cone is going to be the deepest, brightest color in your outer cone is pretty much where you want it to fade off and again how the UDK works it isn't gonna exactly end at this point because it calculates you know light bouncing off of different stuff but it's gonna give you a general idea of how your lights gonna work so again the inner cone just pretend let's just call this the bright spot in the outer cone we'll call this the fall off cone so go ahead and once you got that you know 
how, set up how you want it. I'm going to set mine at 2050 if you want to follow along. Just go ahead and X out of that. And now what we need to do is I want to set up this spotlight so it kind of is sits right on top of these little static meshes because these are just static meshes or 3D's model with glowing material. If we were to play the game right now, as you can see, it doesn't really give off any real light, at least not the effect that I'm going for. So I'm going to take this spotlight and position it right on top of one of these. So in order to do that, probably your front view is the best bet. Go ahead and rotate this somewhere around 90 degrees. Looks pretty close. And now what I want to do is in my top view, position this right about there and also in my front view slide it down a bit it might be even easier if I did that in my side view but this is good for now and another thing that you probably want to watch out for is whenever you're positioning these lights make sure that you don't put them right inside your static mesh because look what happens to my light whenever I want to do that keep an eye on my perspective view and I'm gonna drag this into my static mesh you're gonna say alright it will probably be good if I position it right inside like right there well as soon as your light gets behind your static mesh and even if it's like half and half it's gonna shut off because the static mesh is gonna be blocking the light source from entering your map so make sure it, it doesn't sit exactly inside it like you might think but push it out away from it a little bit again the player isn't gonna notice a difference and it's gonna achieve the effect you're going for so basically I got my light shining exactly how I want to if I were to play this game it would look like the light is coming right from this point right here so now I'm gonna change a couple more properties actually one thing I want to notice is this alright so I'm playing this game and I notice this the static mesh in the material that's on here is kind of like a dark blue material and this light that's coming off is kinda of like a plain white light so I probably wanna change that to make sure this light that's coming off is kinda of blue so go ahead select your light hit F4 to change the light properties and we're done with the spotlight component so we can go ahead and minimize that and in your point light component or excuse me your light component I was still on my last tutorial there go ahead and select the light color now what we could do is we could go ahead and scroll up here to blue and try to get the exact blue that we're looking for like that might be pretty close right there or a better way whenever you're working with lights and static meshes it's probably best to do this go ahead and select this eyedropper and now you can hold this anywhere around on your screen and check it out if we hold it over this green right here our lights gonna turn green if we hold it over this uh, blue right here it's gonna turn blue red right here red but we want to select this blue right here so go ahead and select somewhere in your light right here and by the way look at what's going on on my screen right now the color is changing and that's because usually we won't get this but that's because if we go ahead and X out of here and took a look at my static mesh we noticed that it's actually the material is pulsating up and down the way they have the material set up is that it emits a different color and we're going to be learning how to do that in the upcoming tutorials but usually your lights aren't going to pulsate you can just go ahead and select your color so that's why my light is changing but usually you just hold the eyedropper over a piece of your map and it's going to be one color so go ahead and hit F4 oh it already opened it up for me and select the light color select your eyedropper and you hold it over whatever piece of your map you want to achieve and say I want to achieve this right here this cool blue color I would hold over that but since I'm coming from this light I'm just gonna go ahead and select that right there and it's gonna give me a nice light blue the same exact color as this light right here so now I can go ahead and X out of that actually what I need to do is press apply right there hit OK and now I get my light the same color as this light right here so if we were to go ahead and play this level the light that's coming out of the spotlight would be the exact same color as this as the static mesh and that's the exact look that we're looking for so what we want to do before we exit out of this tutorial is this light is set up and all we need to do is alt drag this over to the other light and now both our lights are set up so we can go ahead and build this level and I'm gonna go ahead and play it and show you guys a real quick example of using spotlights in combination with static meshes how they look when your level is finally put together so go ahead and close out of this and I'm just gonna go ahead and hit play from here and check it out it looks like light is coming right from that and again if you wanted to make it more 
you know customize it a little more you might want to change the settings on the outer and inner cone to make the hotspot actually I probably would want it more how would I say this more focused instead of more wide this is more like point lightish right now but you can mess around with it if you want I just wanted to give you guys a real basic rough draft of how to work with spotlights so in the next couple tutorials what I'm going to be teaching you guys is about all those different kind of lights and all those different kinds of light properties and how to achieve some pretty sweet effects but for now as always that's all you guys get so thank you guys for watching I'm going to be uh, shooting this light if you need me and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial